Hey y'all. It's Jess here from Jesslyn Coaching and Healing. Welcome back to my channel. This evening I'm going to read from Neville Goddard's book, Freedom for All, Chapter 4, The Secret of Feeling, from the wonderful, complete reader. And please make sure, if you're new here, to subscribe for more content like this. And make sure you like and comment. I would love to know where you're at with the Law of Assumption and exploring Neville Goddard and what stood out the most for you from this chapter. The Secret of Feeling. The secret of feeling or the calling of the invisible into visible states is beautifully told in the story of Isaac blessing his second son Jacob by the belief based solely upon feeling that he was blessing his first son Esau. It is recorded that Isaac, who was old and blind, felt that he was about to leave this world and wishing to bless his first son Esau before he died, sent Esau hunting for savory venison with the promise that upon his return from the hunt, he would receive his father's blessing. Now Jacob, who desired the birthright or right to be born through the blessing of his father, overheard his blind father's request for venison and his promise to Esau. So as Esau went hunting for the venison, Jacob killed and dressed a kid of his father's flock, placing the skins upon his smooth body to give him to the feel of his hairy and rough brother Esau. He brought the tastily prepared kid to his blind father Isaac, and Isaac, who depended solely upon his sense of feel, mistook his second son Jacob for his first son Esau and pronounced his blessing on Jacob. Esau, on his return from the hunt, learned that his smooth-skinned brother Jacob had supplanted him, so he appealed to his father for justice. But Isaac answered and said, Thy brother came with subtlety and hath taken away thy blessing. I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. Simple human decency should tell man that the story cannot be taken literally. There must be a message for man hidden somewhere in this treacherous and despicable act of Jacob. The hidden message, the formula of success, buried in the story was intuitively revealed to the writer in this manner. Isaac, the blind father, is your consciousness, your awareness of being. Wow. Esau, the hairy son, is your present objectified world, the rough or sensibly felt, the present moment, the present environment, your present conception of yourself. In short, the world you know by reason of your objective senses. Jacob, the smooth-skinned lad, the second son, is your desire or a subjective state, an idea not yet embodied, a subjective state which is perceived and sensed, but not objectively known or seen, a point in time and space removed from the present. In short, Jacob is your defined objective. The smooth-skinned Jacob, or subjective state, seeking embodiment, or the right of birth, when properly felt or blessed by his father, when consciously felt and fixed as real, becomes objectified, and in so doing, he supplants, supplants the rough, hairy Esau, or the former objectified state. Two things cannot occupy a given place at one and the same time. And so, as the invisible is made visible, the former visible state vanishes. 
your consciousness is the cause of your world. The conscious state in which you abide determines the kind of world in which you live. Your present concept of yourself is now objectified as your environment, and this state is symbolized as Esau, the hairy or sensibly felt, the first son. That which you would like to be or possess is symbolized as your second son, Jacob, the smooth-skinned lad who is not yet seen, but is, a, is subjectively senses and felt. Okay, this is like a typo. The smooth-skinned lad who is not yet seen, but is subjectively sensed and felt. It says senses. And will, if properly touched, supplant his brother Esau or your present world. Always bear in mind the fact that Isaac, the father of these two sons or states, is blind. He does not see his smooth-skinned son Jacob. He only feels him. And through the sense of feeling, he actually believes Jacob, the subjective, to be Esau, the real, the objectified. You do not see your desire objectively. You simply sense it, feel it subjectively. You do not grope in space after a desirable state. Like Isaac, you sit still and send your first son hunting by removing your attention from your objective world. Then in the absence of your first son, Esau, you invite the desirable state, your second son, Jacob, to come close so that you may feel it. Come close, my son, that I may feel you. First, you are aware of it in your immediate environment. Then you draw it closer and closer and closer until you sense it and feel it in your immediate presence so that it is real and natural to you. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching on any point that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. The two agree through the sense of feel, and the agreement is established on earth, is objectified, is made real. The two agreeing are Isaac and Jacob, you and that which you desire, and the agreement is made solely on the sense of feeling. Esau symbolizes your present objectified world, whether it be pleasant or otherwise. That's really important. Whether it be pleasant or otherwise. Jacob symbolizes any and every desire of your heart. Isaac symbolizes your true self with your eyes closed to the present world and the act of sensing and feeling yourself to be or to possess that which you desire to be or to possess. The secret of Isaac, the sensing, feeling state, is simply the act of mentally separating the sensibly felt, your present physical state, from the insensibly felt, that which you would like to be. With the objective senses tightly shut, Isaac made, and you can make, the insensibly felt, the subjective state, seem real or sensibly known, for faith is knowledge. Knowing the law of self-expression, the law by which the invisible is made visible, is not enough. It must be applied, and this is the method of application. First, Send your first son Esau, your present objectified world or problem hunting. This is accomplished simply by closing your eyes and taking your attention away from the objectified limitations. As your senses are removed from your objective world, it vanishes from your consciousness or goes hunting. Second, with your eyes still closed and your attention removed from the world round about you, consciously fix the natural time and, and place for the realization of your desire. With your objective senses closed to your present environment, you can sense and feel the reality of any point in time or space, for both are psychological and can be created at will. It is vitally important that the natural time-space condition of Jacob, that is, 
the natural time and place for the realization of your desire be first fixed in your consciousness. If Sunday is the day on which the thing desired is to be realized, then Sunday must be fixed in consciousness now. Now, <laughs> simply begin to feel that it is Sunday until the quietness and naturalness of Sunday is consciously established. You have definite associations with the days, weeks, months, and seasons of the year. You have said time and again, today feels like Sunday or Monday or Saturday, or this feels like spring or summer or fall or winter. This should convince you that you have definite conscious impressions that you associate with the days, weeks, and seasons of the year. Then, because of these associations, you can select any desirable time, and by recalling the conscious impression associated with such time, you can make a subjective reality of that time now. Do the same with space. If the room in which you are seated is not the room in which the thing desired would be naturally placed or realized, feel yourself seated in the room or place where it would be natural. Consciously fix this time-space impression before you start the act of sensing and feeling the nearness, the reality, and the possession of the thing desired. It matters not whether the place desired be 10,000 miles away or only next door. You must fix in consciousness the fact that right where you are seated is the desired place. You do not make a mental journey. You collapse space, sit quietly where you are, and make thereness, hereness. Close your eyes and feel that the very place where you are is the place desired. Feel and sense the reality of it until you are consciously impressed with this fact. For your knowledge of this fact is based solely on your subjective sensing. Third, in the absence of Esau, the problem, and with the natural time-space established, you invite Jacob, the solution, to come and fill the space, to come and supplant his brother. In your imagination, see the thing desired. If you cannot visualize it, sense the general outline of it. Contemplate it. Then mentally draw it close to you. Come close, my son, that I may feel you. Feel the nearness of it. Feel it to be in your immediate presence. Feel the reality and solidity of it. Feel it and see it naturally placed in the room in which you are seated. Feel the thrill of actual accomplishment and the joy of possession. Now open your eyes. This brings you back to the objective world, the rough or sensibly felt world. Your hairy son Esau has returned from the hunt and by his very presence tells you that you have been betrayed by your smooth-skinned son Jacob, the subjective psychologically felt. But like Isaac, whose confidence was based upon the knowledge of this changeless law, you too will say, I have made him thy Lord and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. That is, even though your problems appear fixed and real, you have felt the subjective psychological state to be real to the point of receiving the thrill of that reality. You have experienced the secret of creation, for you have felt the reality of the subjective. You have a fixed, definite psychological state, which in spite of all opposition or precedent, will objectify itself, thereby fulfilling the name of Jacob, the supplanter. Here are a few practical examples of this drama. First, the blessing or making a thing real. Sit in your living room and name a piece of furniture, rug or lamp that you would like to have in this particular room. Look at that area of the room where you would place it if you had it. Close your eyes and let all that now occupies that area of the room vanish. 
In your imagination, see this area as empty space. There is absolutely nothing here. Now begin to fill the space with the desired piece of furniture. Sense and feel that you have it in this very area. Imagine you are seeing that which you desired to see. Continue in this consciousness until you feel the thrill of possession. Second, the blessing or the making of a place real. You are now seated in your apartment in New York City, contemplating the joy that would be yours if you were on an ocean liner sailing across the great Atlantic. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Your eyes are closed. You have consciously released the New York apartment, and in its place, you sense and feel that you are on an ocean liner. You are seated in a deck chair. There is nothing round you but the vast Atlantic. Fix the reality of this ship, an ocean, so that in this state, you can mentally recall the day when you were seated in your New York apartment, dreaming of this day at sea. Recall the mental picture of yourself seated there in New York, dreaming of this day. In your imagination, see the memory picture of yourself back there in your New York apartment. If you succeed in looking back on your New York apartment without consciously returning there, then you have successfully prepared the reality of this voyage. Voyage. <laughs> Remain in this conscious state, feeling the reality of the ship and the ocean. Feel the joy of this accomplishment. Then open your eyes. You have gone and prepared the place. You have fixed a definite psychological state. And where you are in consciousness, there you shall be in body also. Third, the blessing are making real of a point in time. You consciously let go of this day, month, or year, as the case may be, and you imagine that it is now that day, month, or year which you desire to experience. You sense and feel the reality of the desired time by impressing upon yourself the fact that it is now accomplished. As you sense the naturalness of this time, you begin to feel the thrill of having fully realized that which before you started the psychological journey in time you desired to experience at this time. With the knowledge of your power to bless, you can open the doors of any prison, the prison of illness or poverty, or of a humdrum existence. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings, undo the meek. He hath sent me to bind upon the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So beautiful. I hope you practice some of these examples, but, you know, make it your own. Uh, one thing that I have enjoyed doing is being in my kitchen, but experiencing my ideal kitchen right then and there, you know, visualizing the perfect kitchen island. I'm feeling the feeling of the countertop. I'm having this total experience with sensory vividness of the ideal kitchen. And I'm making then now in the current kitchen. And then, you know, inducing this like trance state, self-hypnotizing myself, getting into state akin to sleep, feeling that it's done and staying there until I have that feeling. And, you know, say you want to have a certain kind of shower in your house. You could be in your current shower, but bring yourself to that perfect shower and have that whole experience. Um, it's, it's wonderful and it works. With that being said, that's the end of this chapter. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment, do your thing. And looking forward to being back for another video. Much love, guys.